before Christmas, the President's VC-137 arrives at Nusur Air Base for a brief state visit with His Majesty King Mohammed V. This is the final stop on the President's history-making 11-nation goodwill junket that has covered 22,000 miles in two weeks. With the Moroccan leader, President Eisenhower reviews the famous Black Guard and the hundreds of Moroccan soldiers and American airmen present to pay honors to these two heads of state. Spectators throng the 20-mile route into Casablanca. Official estimates place the crowd lining the route at more than three quarters of a million people. Tribesmen from the rim of the Sahara, warriors from the plains, and suburban Moroccans all warmly greeting the president in perhaps the most colorful welcome of his tour. While the president handles state business, airmen ready his plane for the transatlantic hop back to the United States. Within a very few hours, the VC-137 will be minutely checked, refueled and ready to carry its distinguished passenger home from a triumphant goodwill mission. Seven short hours after his arrival, the president is ready to depart, confident that his talks with King Mohammed have strengthened our two nations' common beliefs in peace and justice among men. George Air Force Base, ground crewmen prepare a squadron of 18 F-104 starfighters for deployment to Spain. These record-busting craft will be in first-class shape by takeoff time. The 476th TAC Fighter Squadron is the first full squadron to move in this fashion. The briefing is thorough. There's a lot of ocean between the U.S. and Spain. The pilots of these starfighters will be back on California soil in four months. When these men touch down in Spain, they'll be combat ready because their support elements will be right behind them, followed by Matt's strategic airlift force. flying time after leaving the States. The first element is over Marone Air Base near Seville. The 476 will help maintain the air defense of Spanish cities and U.S. military installations in the area. And now, the VIP treatment. We understand the carriage is traditional at Moron, but uh, we're not sure about the senorita. Uh, California was never like this. I mean, like Claude, this is the coolest. Ah, what soothing balm after driving a hot pipe over 3,100 miles of ocean. Well, hasta luego, you all. These young men are candidates for Tactical Air Command's 9th Air Force Missile Man of the Year Award. Their performance and technical skill in the training of Mace and Matador missile crews have earned them this outstanding recognition. To announce the winner, 9th Air Force Commander, Major General W.D. Hutchison. It is indeed a great privilege for me to be here and to present the first 9th Air Force Missile Man of the Year Award to Airman Second Class Edward J. Nudd. <laughs> Headquarters, 9th Air Force. United States Air Force, Shaw Air Force Base, South Carolina, 16 December, 1959. Subject, 9th Air Force Missile Man of the Year. Two, 
Airman Second Class Ed Edward J. Nudd, 4504th Training Squadron, Orlando Air Force Base, Florida. It is with great pleasure that I inform you of your selection by the 9th Air Force as the 1959 Missile Man of the Year. Airman Nudd, recipient of the first Missile Man Award, gained recognition for his work in training mace crews. And he has also been instrumental in authoring training manuals which have aided in producing skilled missile teams in minimum time. Present to you the plaque. The record that goes with Congratulations to the 9th Air Force Missile Man of the Year. This may look to some to be a schematic diagram of a vacuum tube, but it's actually a symbol of some important Air Force achievements. During one seven-day period in mid-December 59, the Air Force set five new aircraft records. Here at Edwards Air Force Base, an F-104 Starfighter, a weapon system accustomed to breaking records, was piloted by Captain Joe Jordan to a new world's altitude mark. Captain Jordan is a test pilot at ARDC's Flight Test Center. From break release to 98,424 feet, the F-104 established a time to climb record of 15 minutes, and then zoomed to a new altitude record of 103,395 feet, bettering the previous record by more than 4,800 feet. Brigadier General Joseph Moore, commander of the 4th Tactical Fighter Wing, piloted his F-105 Thunder Chief in an assault on the world speed record for a closed course. His altitude, 38,000 feet. The general pulled a constant two to two and a half Gs as he steered his fighter in a tight 62 and a half mile circle and with a speed of 1,216 miles per hour, bettered the previous French record by almost 100 miles per hour. This is Air Defense Command's newest interceptor, the F-106 Delta Dart. With Major Joseph W. Rogers at the controls, the 106 bettered a recent Soviet record by 38 miles per hour for a straightaway speed run. At 40,000 feet, Major Rogers flashed two ways on an 18-mile measured course for an average of better than 1,525 miles per hour. And in Brookfield, Connecticut, Captain Walter Hodgson, pilot, and Major William Davis, co-pilot, flew a Command H-43B helicopter to a new world altitude mark. Bettering a Soviet record by nearly 10,000 feet, the H-43 tops 30,000 feet in an extraordinary helicopter performance. The Distinguished Flying Cross is awarded by Chief of Staff General Thomas White to the men who flew their aircraft to new world records. It's a remarkable accomplishment. Five records in seven days. A feat which demonstrates the performance capabilities of the weapon systems now in use by the United States Air Force. The Bomark interceptor missile is undergoing extensive testing at Eglin Air Force Base to improve its range and guidance system. A Bomark guidance package has been grafted to the nose of a Canberra bomber, and with this unique instrumentation marriage, the complete guidance system can be tested under controlled conditions. In actual operation, the guidance system controls the B-57 to intercept with a target aircraft just as it would in an actual missile. With this test arrangement, numerous intercept situations can be studied without expending a missile in each test. It's an economical approach to developing the best possible guidance for the Bomark. It's the Reserve Troop Carrier Rodeo at Ellington Air Force Base. Fourteen troop carrier wings with three teams each compete in this World Series of Reserve Troop Carrier Operations. Navigation, precise mission timing, and drop accuracy are prime scoring factors as all teams fly three drop missions.
supply bundled away. Impact accuracy is checked by triangulation. Competing crews watch intently, determining how well the other guys are doing. Closest drop to target, a very respectable nine feet. At the end of five days of competition, the final scores go up on the huge scoreboard. To the high point gatherer goes the rodeo trophy. This year's winner, the 446th Troop Carrier Wing, the host team from Ellington Air Force Base. Project Open Road, a test of Strategic Air Command's new alert takeoff procedure that literally cuts minutes off the time needed to get a SAC strike force airborne. Pre-flight checks are made while the bomber is taxiing, and when the plane reaches the runway, the pilot applies full power and takes off without delay. Succeeding aircraft follow the same procedure, allowing the bombers to take off just seconds apart. into the B-47 six jet engines to increase takeoff thrust accounts for the smoke. But white lines on the runway guide the pilots toward takeoff. like this one at McDill and Homestead Air Force bases, were termed successful, and the new procedure will allow a greater number of aircraft to be launched in the critically short period of warning which may be expected in the event of attack against our nation. Each additional aircraft airborne adds another nuclear strike against any would-be aggressor and increases the deterrent power of the free world. <laughs> 